Good morning, everyone. I'm Cynthia for Arbitz Cafe. And I'm Sherry. <laughs> <laughs> and we are live today. Yay! <laughs> we love doing the live because we love uh, being in contact with you directly. And uh, this is the time when you can ask a lot of questions. And yeah. um, we have Kitty also that will see your questions and your comments. And Kitty will be helping putting any links that you need. And if we don't see any comments, Kitty uh, can answer your questions too. So welcome, welcome to Abby's Cafe. Tammy says hi, first time here. Yay! Yay. Hi, Tammy. <laughs> hi, Tammy. Elisa says hello. Gabriella says hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Nice. Yeah, I'm so happy to have you. So today we have such a beautiful table. David. Uh, mm. I don't know what I call you, my husband <laughs> names. It's like, really? He must be thinking about me. <laughs> Sherry. <laughs> that was real. Sherry uh, prepared that beautiful table. So it's like we have so many fun things to use. Yes. <laughs> so, so today we're talking color. about, yes. Today we're talking about Swarovski. And um, Swarovski flat bags, um, fancy stone, chaton, rivolis. And this is so beautiful, I really don't know where to start. <laughs> it's like, where do, where do we go? I just love it all. But maybe what we can say, um, so we have a lot of questions. Someone will see a Rivoli or a Chaton or a Fancy Stone and, and ask, where is the hole? Or um, can you put a, a thread? So those items from Swarovski don't have a hole you have to do to glue them or you have to put in a setting or you can do embroidery. So that's why we have so many examples right. around us like that you will see. They are not a bead. They're not, not a bead. bead. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to show you this page. So we have this page on our website. And this page, if you go on, on Swarovski page and then you have Swarovski shop by style. And in here, you can really see how we categorize things. And for just for you to know about the code, so anything that starts with a five, like 5,000 here, that means it's a bead. Something that starts with a six at 6,000 means it's a pendant. And then I think that starts with a one, like 1,000. Um, this one is uh, 2,000 and 3,000. No, no, sorry, those two. All of these don't have holes. Those are the rhinestone and the, the pointy background stone. Those are the sew on. So they do have hole, but it's more for sewing on your clothes. So, and then the 4,000, the 4,000 also don't have any holes. They just, uh, what they call fancy stones. And fancy stones are really cool to use uh, in your jewelry too. So it's not because they don't have a hole that you cannot use them in your jewelry. In fact, we make a lot of uh, pieces with those uh, rhinestones. Actually, right. can you yes. talk about that, please? So maybe we can start with what I have in front of me. So this is in the family of the flat bags. And you see here the size. So they can come in very big to the teeny, teeny, this is really small. <laughs> and you're like, why do you want a small like that? Well, <laughs> you can do a lot of... Um, really fine things, yeah, yes, in detail. exactly. And we'll show you some things with some small we ones. We will, <laughs> yes. And then the flash bag come also in different shape, like um, here, this flame, the heart, or the pointy, uh, the spike. Mm -hmm. So all of these, use you use glue when you want to work with those. And then we have the hot fix. And the hot fix, I will show you the size. You see how there is a little, um, let me show you a flat back. So flat back is kind of matte in the back and the hot fix is kind of shiny. That means that there is glue in there. So you don't need to use glue for that. And we have a tool that you can use to apply the flat back. Right, it's a, it's a heat tool. Um, it looks kind of like a curling iron, but only the one <laughs> one thing. It gets very hot, and it has different tips um, that are sized for the different sizes okay. of the hot fix flat backs, and you just apply that mm -hmm. tool on the top of the crystal, and it melts the glue that's on the back of the crystal onto whatever it is you're trying to apply it to. Yes. So different application. Wonderful for fabrics mm -hmm. because you don't have 
glue, loose glue yes. mess to um, worry about. So it's it's really ideal for fabrics. Yes. But you can apply it to other things as but, well. And it is so strong really on strong. fabrics. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. never had a problem with that. Yeah. So, um, and then the difference is why do you choose a flat back? Why you choose a hot fix? Like you say, hot fix we use for a lot of fabrics, but you can use on something else. And flat back you can glue on anything. Mm -hmm. And um, the someone asked me also, can you glue a hot fix? Well, there is always already glue in there, but it happened that sometimes I don't have the colors in flat back, but I have the colors in hot fix, and I will use glue. <laughs> <laughs> so you supply your own glue onto yes. the back of the hot fix and, and use it. Yeah, it's, and it works. It, yeah, it, it works can work. too. <laughs> It's kind of a waste because I apply a glue too, but sometimes yeah. it's like, well, I have a hot fix there, the flat back is not yeah. there, yeah. I need that color. Yeah, and it may not be the ideal um, uh, right. direction to go, but it, in a pinch. Right. <laughs> and then this is a tool that's, um, it's called a uh, crystal katana, and this is, um, maybe Sharia will let you explain okay. because. This is a great tool. So when you're picking up flat backs, um, as you can see, some of them are very tiny and difficult. You can use tweezers and things to pick them up. But this tip is a little bit sticky. It's a, it's a type of wax. And you just daub it. And you can see, I'll apply some pressure. You can pick it up and set it down again. And then this end of the tool has a tip on it where you can then apply pressure and push that down into your glue better. Even move it around a little bit because glue will slip and slide and you can use this tool for placing it and, and shifting it and moving it around. It's a wonderful tool. This is probably one of my favorites. Oh, really? There are other kinds of daubers um, that are um, a, a wand or stick with a little bit of wax, mm -hmm. and you can kind of shape and form the wax of those tips as well, and, and they're great too. Okay. Um, so there's there's all kinds of wonderful tools now for working with flat backs. Yeah. Um, so you can check those out on our site. Yeah. And we have two um, glue that we use. Sherry used the um, Swarovski glue, mm -hmm. and I use the uh, epoxy because that's the glue that I use for right. everything. So later we will show you how to glue, okay. how to use those glue. Uh, but now can we show um, the application that we did with the flat bag? So let's start here. So here I did like two hats, and um, on the blue one I wanted to show like uh, the knights mm -hmm. with the stars and everything. And then on the other one, I think <coughs> I use, <laughs> yeah, I cannot see one. I use a um, <coughs> lace, is that a lace? I, mm -hmm. I use yeah. some fabrics and I glue on fabrics too. Connie's asking where do you get the crystal katana? On albiz.com. <laughs> you can check out our website. <laughs> it's albiz.com and we sell it. Yes. Yay. And then uh, here I use some flat bags on this little, on leather. So I glue that uh, you can do things like that too so i have this uh, book that i started to make for my niece and you see how i use some of those black bags and let me open and then you can see they're really fun because they add a list extra a sparkle on the pages Is and that layer Mm -hmm. That's Leah, yeah, my cute. niece, yes. <laughs> when she was a baby and now she's 15 years old. You can see her on Art Beats Cafe. We have an episode with That's her. That's true. <laughs> That's true. And then Sherry, on your side, you have some application there too. Right. So um, here I have a couple t-shirts where we've applied um, the flat backs. For these patterns, I just simply went to a craft store and found a stencil. Right. Um, you know, the kind that you would use for painting, and then just filled it, drew the outline, and then filled it in with the crystals, however I wanted. And um, so that was really, that was a fun way to um, come up with a pattern. Uh, here we have a pair of sunglasses where we've applied flat backs to the sides to sparkle them up. You know, depending mm -hmm. on the style of glasses, you can go crazy right. <laughs> with flat backs. Um, have a pair of shoes. So this, this one up front here, I've got the fancies um, glued onto the top front of the shoe. And then this is where you can go crazy <laughs> with. <laughs> I love this one. <laughs> crazy with flat backs. This is all different shapes and sizes from big to small, all mixed in to kind of pave that 
entire surface. And I'm going to flip it over. But you don't have to go that crazy. <laughs> you can simplify and um, just put flat backs here and there, and it's just a fun look. Holly wants to know if there's any issues using glue with the hot fix. No. No, I never had any uh, any problem with that. Okay. It's, they're still stuck. They're still stuck. And, yeah. Yes. And Elise is asking, are there patterns available on the website too? For applying, well, what Sherry showed you, those are on the site, and I think you have right. a pattern for those two. Yeah, these are these are on the site with instructions on how we went about um, doing that, and um, the hats for the hat site. Yeah. site. Yes. Yeah. This oh, necklace bye. also, I did flat backs on, um, on, oh, what do we call these? The scales. The, the scales, mm -hmm. yeah. Just did half and half and then linked them up um, as a necklace. And then these are flat backs. These are right. on the side. These are the fancies. The flames, yes. Uh, and then we've got a couple barrettes up there that have flat backs. Um, mm -hmm. I don't remember if those are still on the site, but you can just buy a barrette that you like mm -hmm. and then find pieces that fit that surface well and then fill in with the flat backs. And, right. Um, I, I really love the flame, and what I really yeah. love also, they came, um, Tira Kaz did those basil and they fit perfectly, and I just love, love, love that shape. Yeah, it's, it's a fun shape. Mm -hmm. um, it's just in, in that color. Yes, <laughs> yes. In particular, I think it's so pretty. Um, these are flat backs also. We nice. have these just plain little um, connector links, and I just glued a little flat back onto those. You can put them, you know, in any order that you want. Right. There's all kinds of shapes like that. Yes. Um, and that little bit of sparkle adds something mm -hmm. that kind of makes it yes. yours. So. Yeah, so it's, it's, they're, they're really great for uh, accessorizing yeah. or something. Yeah. I just love it. But the one that I really, really love is the Rivoli's. And Look at the colors. So we have the Rivoli's here and then the Chaton. Can you explain the difference, uh, Sherry, please? Yeah, um, so these are the Chaton across the back, and those are shaped um, shaped like a diamond would be, uh, where it has the, the pointed pavilion underneath, and then it okay. has the crown on top with the flat table. So this is and so, um, here. Yeah, and so those are suited for settings like this. Um, really well, they much like you would a, a gemstone. Um, they fit in settings nicely because they've got that shape. Mm -hmm. um, these have prongs that fold over, and so it's it's that kind of thing. The the uh, Rivoli are pointed on the back. They have the pointed pavilion, but then they also have a pointed top, and then facets all around that pointed top and bottom. Can you see this? Is <coughs> so you there is a point here, and then a point here, which the chaton was flat on the top. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it has that flat table. So those are the two main differences. Um, we um, have Rivoli's in larger sizes. Yes. And and Chaton's in smaller sizes and they kind of overlap a little bit in their sizes in the middle. Yes. Um, but generally the larger sizes um, we have in Chaton or in uh, Rivoli's. Yes. And those are really easy to use, and we love using them because of, I mean, look at the colors. Yeah. It's just amazing. And if you cannot see the, the colors, um, how they really are, please check our website, um, rbeads.com, and you will see they have amazing, amazing colors and reflection, too. And I just, just really love, gorgeous. love them. <laughs> We can yeah. look at them all day long. <laughs> so uh, we have some setting like that that come uh, with the Rivoli, so you can um, just glue them inside. Or we have some setting that's this chain. And this is uh, a chain where you just uh, put the um, Rivoli inside and then you just fold the prong. And Sherry will demo mm -hmm. that later. Yeah. And um, or we have some setting like that, like this one, like Tira cast. That's really nice. Um, Sherry, I love what you did here with those four, with the, the Tira cast setting and the components. Yeah, we have beautiful, beautiful links from Tira cast mm -hmm. and charms um, that that accept the Rivoli sizes, and so those are so fun to work with. Right, and look, so this is also some more Rivolis down here too. The chain already had the setting, and then. Um, Look at this one here. Sherry did some bezel around it. Right, did a peyote stitch seed bead bezel. 
um, to fit around the Rivoli's, and, and uh, that's a wonderful application. Yes, <laughs> it is. And fun technique to yes. learn. But the other thing that you can do with Rivoli's, I mean, don't hesitate to use them in a different way. And I want to show you here that piece that I made, and it's actually, I have three pieces, so I glue that one, then I glue the wings, and then I glue this piece. So it kind of make a um, uh, uh, stage mm -hmm. for the Rivoli, and this piece um, it's has a a, um, a hole in it. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So I was able to glue that Rivoli in it. That's beautiful, and I think it looks it looks really great. Um, uh, here also, Sherry made this beautiful necklace. I hope you can see it. Let me. I can bring it like that. Look at all of this blue. Yeah, with this the is such a gorgeous color. Beautiful, beautiful. And those are just really fun, easy settings, which you'll see in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> How easy it is to do. Yes. Yeah. So maybe sure you can demo now. Let's okay. see. Yeah. So we brought some chain here. And Sherry will show you how easy it is. So these um, come linked together. Some of the chain is um, already finished as a necklace. Mm -hmm. And then some of it is by the foot. Right. And so you can buy however much you want. And um, I'm going to use this. I'll show you how easy it is to. Cheryl says you both through. create such beautiful jewelry no oh. matter what you use. Oh, oh thank, thank you. you. <laughs> You know, we work with some beautiful beads oh, and components, yeah. and I think that's why it inspire us all the time. Yeah, there were so many beautiful things, things to work with. So here's the Rivoli, and as you can see, this is um, prongs, it's solid on the back, and I'm going to just set this down in within the, the um, center of the prongs. And what you want to make sure is that it's sitting flat. You don't want that sitting at a funny angle um, mm -hmm. before you start pushing your prongs. You wanna make sure that that's sitting down in there nice and flat. And then I like to use uh, my nylon jaw pliers, which are um, these, and I'm using just this flat side surface. And so what we're gonna do is push the four prongs over, but there is kind of a way that you can do it that is a little more, um, um, less risky. Right. <laughs> I could really focus and push this one prong over right. and get it nice and tight and then realize that I've just tilted the whole yes. um, uh, Rivoli in the setting. So what I like to do is I'm going to push a little bit on this prong and then I'm going to go over to the opposite mm -hmm. and push a little on that and make sure that I've got that sitting nice and square and then I'm going to do it to the two opposite. Okay. So I like to put my um, thumb or finger on there knowing that I've got this nice and flat in here and I'm just going to give it a little bit of a push. I didn't, I don't know if you can see, but it's not just all the way right, down just yet. A bit down, yeah. Just a little. And you don't even open your tool, you just push it yeah, with the side. I'm using this side oh, edge. So, okay. And then I'm going to do the same on this side. And again, I'm not doing it all the way. Okay. And then I'm going to go to the opposite too. And you can see how easy that push is. I mean, I'm, I'm applying some force, right. but um, it, you know, it really, <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> really straining to do that. So you can see that I have them all pushed over a little bit, but they're not down on the surface of the Rivoli. And ultimately, that's where you want to get the prongs. Otherwise, you're gonna be catching things, threads oh, okay. and, right. and hair and things. Um, so you want to then just work your way around. Just keep doing it. Sometimes I even, um, you know, I'll get my thumb back here. Oops, thumb back here. And then just work your way around. Again, I'm not worrying about getting it all the way. Mm -hmm. Now I'm just getting closer. Just still making sure that my Rivoli is nice and flat in that setting. And hopefully it is. I'm, you can see from the side view. And then just repeat and just <laughs> go back and just work your way around until you get them down nice and secure right. on top of the Rivoli. Yes. So super easy. 
Yeah. And that was fast. It was fast. So Can I just have you on oh, my lawn? Yes, you yes. can. Yes. So I wanted to talk about this. So is it for um, this bezel, it's exactly the same, um, the same way. So those bezel came. Let's show this one. Melissa is asking if these are glass or acrylic stones. They're crystal. They're crystal. They're crystal. Yes. So um, this is a bezel. So it come this way, and the prams are all uh, standing up, and you want to fold them around the crystal. And I do exactly like uh, Sherry showed you, but I do it with my um, when open the nylon jar. So I go on one side slowly, and I don't bend completely, and I go, I do the opposite side, and then I go on the side just slowly, and I go the opposite way, and I go slowly, slowly. You don't want to bend right away because you then you're moving the mm -hmm. rhinestone. Mm -hmm. um, on the side so you just go slowly slowly you do opposite ways like that very easy probably for me to do those three maybe 15 minutes mm -hmm. not even that yeah. and um no glue needed this is what i really love those uh, yeah. bezels too and what tool is that that you're holding cynthia it's the nylon gel uh, pliers mm -hmm. and they're great for wire working too yes this is kind of the go-to for yes for wire working, wire straightening. Yes, you can see how Sherry used that a lot because <laughs> yeah, it's getting more. <laughs> <They're> not new. <laughs> <laughs> and those are replaceable. Once you wear yes. these down, then you can purchase new um, nylon pieces that fit inside. They just screw in there, so and hold them. Yes. So it's a, it's a, this is a must have. <laughs> <laughs> and they are on our website. Yep. Albiz.com. Yeah, just search for do. nylon jaw pliers. Because um, people are asking for the name, and yeah. that's okay. it. Nylon yeah. Jaw Yes, <laughs> it is. Yeah. So we love, love, love the Rivolis, and um, there is another rhinestone that we really love is the cushion. Mm -hmm. Oh, shall we? Did we show this one? Oh, this is another Rivoli, Rivoli? that you use, mm -hmm. and uh, Sherry made a basil ring. This is beautiful. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's a peyote bezel on a peyote band. Okay. <laughs> And you can find this yep. idea in our design studio um, too. Yes. Yeah. Beautiful Sherry. So the cushion. Oh, those gorgeous <laughs> cushions. And look at the colors. And these new Swarovski colors. It's so gorgeous. And I think the reason why we love them is because first they, they square with round edges. Mm -hmm. And then the top is flat. So the reflection inside mm -hmm. is just gorgeous. amazing. Gorgeous. I mean, they're really, really beautiful stone. And hopefully you can see the reflection inside. I'm not sure you, you can, um, the camera, but um, if you see them live, I mean, holding them, it's just, just amazing. They're just gorgeous. Another and one of my favorites. Oh, <laughs> I know. So we have two, uh, we have different bezel that come with that. So we have a simple one like that and then a little more um, uh, intricate ones. So the way how you want to choose, you know, I'm looking at this, which, which one do I want? Well, if you want to um, choose something that is very classic and uh, you just show the stone, then go with the simple bezel like that. And then you can see how you barely see the metal oh around right. it. It's all stone. It's huh? all yeah. stone. And you can easily just do that with a chain. That'd be gorgeous. Mm -hmm like that look at that this blue like that so it come in um, gold color finish and also silver but now if you want to do something a little more um, how can I say that with a little more design oh, that's the not the right size then you can use a bezel like that mm -hmm. that show a little more metal and that makes a completely different design it does. Yeah. but that's it's also beautiful. very beautiful and we have some sample to show you this is a necklace that I made, um, and <laughs> <It's> gorgeous. <laughs> I just gorgeous. love it. And you know what? It's funny because sometimes you make something and you know right away that it's going to be beautiful. Mm. <laughs> so I made this, and I thought, okay, how does it look like? And then I put on me, and I was like, wow! <laughs> 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 it was just you gorgeous. <laughs> So super easy. I mean, beside it, I put some um, some uh, uh, round crystals, 
but I could have put only the rhinestone. It would have been really nice too. And that was really fast to make. Yeah, oh, it's gorgeous. Yes. And here, Sherry, did you make those earrings yeah. too? Yeah, so, so pretty. Same type of, of setting, the bezel setting, um, but in the gold. And I just, oh, I just love those. Yes. So, so beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, so you can dangle it from anything. Right. <laughs> yes. And again, you yeah. choose a setting that show a little more of metal mm -hmm. yeah. because you also use a metal bead. So that works really well yeah. together. A little more contemporary looking. Yes. Yeah. And then Cynthia, you have this gorgeous right. pendant up here with yes. the yellow green. That was the uh, with non-design components. And um, I thought that was really nice inside the circle. And then beside it, um, I used those long, how do you call this? Those oh, long. Like a spike. A yes. Yeah. Yes. They, they fit very well together. Very that well lavender together. is so pretty in the copper. It is. It is. Yes. So again, if we haven't, if you haven't tried the uh, cushion, uh, please, please do. They're just gorgeous. I mean, we just love them. And, mm -hmm. um, I keep looking at them. Yeah, <laughs> what can I do? Next. <laughs> <laughs> they are. Yes. Yeah. Um, I wanted to talk also about those little guys here. Those are yeah. urchin. Aren't they sweet? Storm. Yeah. They're really sweet and they fit perfectly in that little yeah, uh, city. In here for you so you can see. They're frosted around the outside edges but in a pattern. And um, so the color and mm -hmm. sparkle just sort of breaks through it. It's, it's so pretty. Love those. I love those too. And beside it, it's yeah. a Buddha. This is the Buddha. I came up because he's probably sitting. So these are fancy stones. These are right? Those are fancy stones, yes. Yeah. yeah. So Buddha shaped. Mm -hmm. And we have this wonderful pendant setting. Um, he just sits down in there so he would be glued in and you're mm -hmm. good to go. Yes, beautiful like beautiful that. Beautiful setting. This is a really nice setting. Yes. Um, Mary says too. that that blue one looks like a starburst in the center of Isn't the it stone. Yes. It's so pretty. That's true. And then this is the vision stone. It has faceting that kind of breaks through in a different mm -hmm. pattern, not the traditional type of fat faceting. It has a, like the center eye. <laughs> it's so beautiful. Yes. And this will work in a lot of the same settings right. as well. Anything that's round, it has that same um, uh, back. This doesn't have the point, but it has the angled back, so it's going to sit well. Mm -hmm. And then we have these, which are so much fun. These are eyes. <laughs> I just, I love, you I love, love eyes, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love the, um, the uh, lover's eyes, the old paintings that were the miniatures, right. and um, so I that I just love, love those. those. Yeah, I'm, I'm not afraid of eyes. I love eyes, and these I'm come in all, of them. all different colors: <laughs> blue eyes, green eyes, mm -hmm. brown eyes. Uh, we have this wonderful setting. It comes in both a pendant and a link, so it has a loop. This is the pendant or charm setting, so it has the little loop on top, so you can hang it from a charm bracelet or a necklace. Or we have the link style, so you can link your eye or eyes <laughs> <laughs> into a bracelet. Just a single eye says a lot. And then with yes. beads and other things, yes. this would be a wonderful bracelet. That would be and like a choker. You, know, yeah. you just put a oh, chain sure. or yeah. even a piece of leather and do a choker. Mm, wonderful that. choker. Yeah, like your eyes is looking right. at you. <laughs> um, this is one that I um, um, beaded around and made into a pin. And so... Um, we've got a lot of different layers of beads. That is beautiful. Yeah. Yes, because the fancy stone a lot of time. Back on the back. Yes, so the fancy stone a lot of time are not flat on the back. <coughs> right. And, and you find depth. a very great way to do it and uh, to add the beads around it. I think it's really beautiful. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a lot <laughs> of fun. You um, just build around the the bead itself. Right. Uh, if you can attach it to something glue it to begin with if you need to and then just start building and stitching and this is on the website also so you can find instructions on how I went about doing that <coughs> excuse me 
I used to be backing and sort of built a mm-hmm. layers. Right. <laughs> Beautiful. Yes. Yeah. And, and then, then yes, we do love the big fancy stone. This is something um, we don't hesitate mm. to use. <laughs> no, it's not and we gorgeous. love we love them because because they are big. Then you see more the the colors. You see more um, some of the, um, the sparkle uh, sparkle in it. Right. Um, they're really really beautiful. And some of them have setting, so they're really easy to use. Yeah, let's put one here. So this is a real simple, um, like the smaller version, just has the simple loop. Not a lot of metal is going to sh- show around this. You're going to see mostly that mm-hmm. gorgeous, um, Look that at that. gorgeous stone. Isn't that pretty mm-hmm. on yes. a chain? Yes, it would go great with your outfit, by the way. <laughs> <coughs> Sue Allen's are so pretty. Isn't it that is, pretty? It is. They are amazing. And I know the size can be overwhelming, but really, when you have a sitting like that, you just glue them and then it can be one pendant or you can put in a long (coughs) chain and then it goes uh, down so it's you know it's not too big around your neck yeah Yeah, that on a fairly delicate chain yes just gorgeous Mm -hmm. love this one this This one looks like it it kind of has an oil slick on the surface it's so pretty these aren't too deep for their overall size Mm -hmm. they're um you can see there, there's some depth to them yes but they're not super deep so some of those um, fancy stone like Sherry said they're not uh, too deep in the back so I really like to use them as embroidery and mm-hmm. I love doing embroidery around them and one of my favorite pieces is the one beside Sherry and this is one that I made a very very long time this fancy stone is really big <laughs> <laughs> it is. Brenda's is asking, can other types of stones be used in the cup chain? For example, mixing some turquoise gemstone or pearls. If it'll fit. Mm-hmm. You've done that before with check glass. I, I put check glass flowers in the setting and, yes. and pushed the prongs over a little. Um, the prongs weren't quite long enough, so I glued them. Um, mm-hmm. But if, if it fits, yes. <laughs> you can do it. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yes, so that, <coughs> I was fascinated by the colors of that stone, and I felt like I needed to do something, and it was in winter, so that's why that inspired me to choose those colors. For me, it was kind of a wintery mm-hmm. colors, mm-hmm. Um, and that stone is just beautiful. Yeah, it really is. Just beautiful, yes. And here is another of uh, embroidery that I made also, the same with a fancy stone here, and then I built around with some soutache, and then some uh, beads. I love that. And that, that uh, I love that gorgeous. too. Yes. And just to let you know, um, you've been asking me several times if we can do a live video with me showing you how to do embroidery like that. I will. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I will. It's, so it's much coming. Fun. <laughs> so much fun. Yes. Um, and here we have a simple ring setting for the large pear-shaped fancy. Mm-hmm. So just four simple little prongs. And you can yes. do this in 10 minutes yes. and you're good to go. I just love this. And Vicky, you've been wearing those big rings too. Oh, I love, I love them. Those. Especially that color. Like you don't need anything else exactly. with that color. It is such a pretty, exactly. um, pretty color. And then this is that large... Uh, amethyst colored or lilac colored um, and I just did a seed beaded um, peyote bezel around it and then a simple straight um, peyote band that I attached underneath the bezel. Beautiful so, shape. Yeah, not as difficult as it looks. Mm-hmm. Sue Ellen techniques. says, yes, I want to learn bead embroidery. <laughs> 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 and this one gets a lot of wear. This one is... Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, That's my favorite. Yeah, mm-hmm. love this. This is a little trickier in that you have the the pear shape, um, but the, the instructions on how we did that is on the side also. And I like I like the side. I think it has that little bit of detail. That's fun. Has a nice tapered shank. So even though it's a huge top mm-hmm. you know, for a ring, um, this is a pretty low profile. Right. And uh, you know overall, and then the ring is just molds to you. And it tapers, so it's not real big on the finger. So they're really comfortable to wear. If you're going to wear something big, this is a nice way to go. Yeah, Vicky steal it all the time. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I need to make my own, but I, I always just steal yeah. Sherry's. Yeah, <laughs> really comfortable. Yeah. 
And uh, talking about embroidery, you have uh, two necklaces down mm -hmm. there. That, so just small little embroidery with those uh, rhinestones again. Very easy to do, and I probably show how to make something simple like that with a small, uh, s small size. Yeah. Because of course, the bigger it is, the longer. Yeah. <laughs> it takes to but make. You kind of need to know, you know, like where do I start? Yes. You know, I look at that and think, oh, there's a lot there, and wh what is that starting point? And exactly. Once you figure that out, then, then pretty soon you're doing things like that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yeah. So hopefully we inspire you with those big fancy stone um, they are very beautiful and remember we have some setting for them so you can easily glue them mm -hmm. and, and put them on a on a chain even yeah. but they are really really gorgeous mm -hmm. and sorry you, you can find more colors on our website by the way definitely should yeah. we show them how easy it is to glue let's do that bit. okay so there's different kinds of, of mm -hmm. adhesives and um, so I'm gonna today I'm gonna show you the Swarovski two-part epoxy, which is um, just a fabulous glue. It's just really great, mm -hmm. um, strong adhesive. I think it's a one-hour dry, um, but then um, a little more time for it to cure. You you want that to set overnight, really, right. before you so, wear. So, we can you explain when you say one hour dry, what does that mean So exactly? it means that in about an hour, mm -hmm. it's going to start setting. Yeah, it may even be to the point where you can't move right. the item in there. You might be able to. You might be able to nudge it a little bit, but mm -hmm. it's, it's starting to set at one hour. Right. And um, there's other adhesives that are five minute mm -hmm. set and um, and how do you, which do you use? Do right. you use one hour or do you use five minutes? And it kind of depends on what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, for larger pieces, um, I, I want to know that they're going to be really secure. Right. So I like the idea of a one hour set. Um, but if you're, you know, trying to put a lot of different things together mm -hmm. and you've got a deadline, <laughs> five <laughs> minutes is wonderful to work with. Right. And, um, but if you're trying to settle lots of little flat backs, mm -hmm. um, as you'll see, you have to mix these two parts together. And right. so you, you squeeze out a little bit, uh -huh. you mix it together, and then you're putting flat backs. But if that's drying every five minutes, yes. then that yes. is kind of a time killer. So um, if you can do something that takes longer to set, mm -hmm. then that's great. Right. And but <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes you want to move your flat back. Exactly. You realize, oh, maybe I should put a bigger one. So if you have an hour to work with, you then can, it's easy exactly. to do. Exactly, you can shuffle it a little bit. Yes. Sometimes you're gluing things onto a curve. Right. And so um, if you can glue something in that's going to set real quickly as mm -hmm. kind of your your centerpiece or your your marker, and then glue towards those. Um, with a, a, a glue that's going to take a little longer and then right. you've got that freedom, you can kind of mix it up. So it just really depends on what you're doing. Yes. Um, but this is this is the um, two-part Swarovski. Mm -hmm. And you really so like that glue. I really like this one. This is a fabulous glue. It's just a super secure and really easy to work with. And so one is a hardener and one is um, like an activator. And so the object is to um, squeeze. Oh, see, these haven't been opened yet. This is how they come, and the little poker is in the cap. So we're just going to. Now it's open. And so the object is to squeeze an equal amount of each part. So this is part B. And that looks pretty equal. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes yes. <laughs> it's a process. And, you know, I'll get one on there. Um, I even like to look at it from the side because from the top it might look like the same amount. Right. But one might be domed quite a bit higher right. than the other. But that looks pretty even. Um, it needs to be even mm -hmm. in order for the um, yes. adhesive to um, work properly. And then you stir and you want to mix these two parts together and um, you want to do this for especially on the on the longer curing ones you want to do this for a little while what are you to using make. to stir so this is just a little wooden stir stick 
I can use toothpicks. Um, I, I use paper clips. I have, you know, found paper clips and <laughs> the ones that are getting, you know, not so great for paper anymore. I just pull the end open and I use those a lot. Um, toothpicks are great. Yeah, I love those. You can find those in a craft store and they come in bags of 100. Yeah. And they're not super expensive. So, there we go. And now you're ready to go. Shall I glue something? You glue something, yes. Okay, this was gorgeous. <laughs> Let's do that. Yeah, like this one. Oh, so pretty. So, how much glue? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't want so much glue that when... So, I'm, I'm you know, two, um, two ways to go. I could put the glue in the setting or I could put the glue on the back of the crystal. Right. Or both. And um, so I, and I do it both ways. Mm -hmm. I think it just kind of depends on the mood I'm in, really. I don't know. <laughs> um, you don't want so much glue that it's going to ooze out yes. and around the edges, which I've done. And you use you can oh. use wipes oh, then. Nice. Then you yeah. can use wipes to take the excess. You can, off. thankfully. Yeah. So I tend to like to put it just a little bit on the crystal, so I can okay. see. So you stand on the crystal. You know that if I have that everywhere. You know, if I get that everywhere and then put it down in there, it's just going to come around. Mm -hmm. So I, I tend to maybe even under glue a little. I might just put just a little bit more on there. But once you, especially in a setting like this, where the whole um, crystal is surrounded, right. this is going to be enough to um, secure that. And it's going to work its way up those sides. And so I'd like to make sure that I've got it in there. Um, evenly, you know, level, mm -hmm. and then I just start pushing. Just, I don't want to push too much in case it's going to ooze, right. but I give it just a nice, make sure it's making that contact, and, and you can feel the glue in there. Right. If, if you don't feel the glue, then maybe you don't it's quite have enough, enough. Mm -hmm. yeah, but you can kind of feel it in there, and I can feel that it's going out the sides okay. of the stone, so okay. I'm pretty confident that that's enough. And then you want to make sure that where you set this to dry mm -hmm. is nice and level. Yes. So that it doesn't dry and then slump out the side or, or whatnot. And I've not made a nice level, <laughs> level <laughs> place for myself right now. So I'm going to hold it <laughs> while I watch you glue. <laughs> okay. So what I use is um, the Epoxy 5. And uh, I use that glue because I, I use it for anything. I mean, I... I glue so many things. I love gluing things together. So this is what I use. So it comes like that with this little top. And this is just to put, um, it's just the, the, the tip. Mm -hmm. And let's take this out. Oops. So this is five minutes. It, this is five minutes, yes. And then, so it's a syringe. And then you just push on it. Usually it comes out uh, at the same time but this one came out first so i'm going to push on this side only and try to make especially up. when it's first been opened yeah it so um, i go. think i'm going to waste a little right now because they're not equal and it's the same you want them to be equal so let's see there we go it's coming now i can push both at the same time And this one is a little more, so I'm going to add a little more on that side. And I think that should be okay. And then you have this little cap here to use. And so you do the same, you just mix them together. And I like to mix until I can feel it's a little thick. Remember, you have only five minutes to work with. And um, the reason why I like the five minutes is because I like to make something and then work on something else really quickly. And um, you have five minutes, but at the same time, it takes 24 hours to cure. So you could make your necklace, but then don't wear your necklace right away. Just wait a little. So you see how it's thick. This is how I like it. So I'm gonna grab a little, and actually I do put the glue in the bezel. So I can put it in the bottom here, and make sure that it's all, it's 
sometimes I put just a little, the same as Sherry said, don't put too much because it's gonna come out. And then I will put my flat back on top of this and push on it. The glue smell a lot, so make sure you open your window also. Mm -hmm. but Good ventilation. Yes, and that's pretty much it. But I, I mean, I glue so many things with it. Like for example, this is another uh, flight back. It's a skull, and I uh, glue it on that filigree. So I put glue on the back of the skull, and then I wait it a little. So don't put it on your table because the glue's gonna come out. So I wait it a little, and since it's five minutes, it gets hard very quickly. Mm -hmm. And then I was able to turn it and I added more glue, I just took my glue and I added more glue here in the back to make it stronger. So that's why I like the five minutes a lot because then I can really, I don't have to wait too long to apply the glue on, on both sides. There. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's really, really easy to use uh, those rhinestones. Um, we use them quite a lot, as you can see. <laughs> right. We make a lot of things with them. Um, but really, if you haven't used any Rivoli or Fancy Stone, I really recommend that you yeah. use them. Uh, especially, we have the setting that goes with, and uh, they just easy. You see how fast mm -hmm. we did to glue them. Definitely. And I yes. find myself like, like, oh, I've got this little pile of glue. What else can I, I glue? And I start looking around. <laughs> like, does anything need to be fixed, <laughs> repaired? Maybe you should yeah. glue those two together. Please do. <laughs> These two? Okay. <laughs> so pretty. And, and my glasses. glue is already, oh, no, I can still glue something. So I will. They can't stop. I, we <laughs> cannot stop. Yeah, and see, yours is drying already, right? Yes, it's and drying see, mine's super fast. still very gluey. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, mm. mine is getting really fast. And, and that's the thing with the five minutes epoxy. Uh, when you see that the glue is getting too hard, don't use it. Don't try to save and use it. Um, because you will, it, it won't stick on your, uh, on your stone. And then, so I mixed a lot on my um, paper, but I usually don't mix that much. I just do little by little. Here, I just glue this one. There, gorgeous. So fast. So fast. Oops. There, so I've got a little seepage there. Mm -hmm. oh. And again, if you have some wipes with you, that would be better. Like that, mm -hmm. Sherry can uh, wipe it with a, yeah. clean it with a wipe. Even after, depending on the application, even after it's dry, sometimes right. you can go in and get that glue off too. Right. But there we go. You can see I've got so little over glue coming around, around the mm -hmm. edges, and I didn't come with white. So. <laughs> we have a comment in French from Anne, but oh, I don't oh. know what it says. Oh. So, do you think you can? Read Bonsoir. It? Je prefer to say autour de fancy stone avec de délicats ou ah, de rocaille. Okay, okay. <laughs> Sorry for butchering your language. <laughs> but thank you first for commenting in French. It makes me happy. <laughs> Cynthia speaks it. Yeah, yeah I speak with French. delicates. Right? Yes. Okay. So this That's person is she, saying that she preferred to use the um, the fancy stone with some délicats and do a like Jimmy stitching, peyote stitching stitching around it stitching <laughs> embroidery yeah oh well you did well because <laughs> i understood okay. i understood <laughs> well this is it for us today i hope you enjoyed this video and again please look at the the rhinestone look at the rivoli the chaton the cushion or the fancy stone they are really gorgeous and don't be scared to use them. It's easy to use them in your uh, jewelry. Mm -hmm. well, thank you so much. Thank you. Jerry. Oh, one thing. So this video is on our Facebook page. It will be on our website, but also on our YouTube channel. So if you like it, <coughs> if you like that video, please send some likes to us, <laughs> share those videos. And remember on our YouTube channel, you can subscribe to our uh, channel. We have lots and lots of videos and tutorials um, to inspire you. Yes. So thank you so much and uh, we see you next time. Mm. Bye, bye bye. Au revoir. <laughs>